What does Rumi say about the intoxication of love? How can this sacred intoxication, this seemingly abstract idea, guide us towards spiritual awakening? Rumi's metaphors can make his poetry appear as abstract spirituality, but in fact, they are about something that we can all access. That is, they are awakening us to our highest potentials, to the highest purpose in life. Today, we delve into Rumi's teachings on the transformative power of divine love. بیار ساقی بادت فدا سر و دستار زهر کجا که دهد دست جام جان دستار Rumi begins by a bold and a somehow shocking request. Bring the wine and sacrifice everything for a sake of that cup. Is this line about physical wine? This is Rumi's metaphor for the spiritual wine, the intoxicating love that flows from the Divine Beloved. In the Sufi tradition, wine is a powerful symbol representing love and wisdom that comes from the Divine. When Rumi says, bring that wine, he is embracing this love fully. He is surrendering worldly attachments in exchange for the Divine Truth. This love is the key to unlocking the mysteries of life, of existence, and the soul's connection to the Divine. But why the emphasis on sacrifice? Why must we give things up to receive this wine? The reason is that for Rumi, our self, our ego, our attachments are barriers to experience the Divine Love. To drink from this cup, we must first empty ourselves. We must let go of things and illusions that separate us from the Divine. Rumi tells the cupbearer that is God, come, intoxicated, and with the cup in your hand. Rumi is asking us to not only accept this love, but to be transformed by it. To be intoxicated with this love means to lose ourselves in the Divine, to experience a kind of spiritual ecstasy where we go beyond our individual existence, our worries and concerns. This intoxication isn't a loss of control. It is a surrender to something much greater. Enter, intoxicated, with a cup in your hand. When you are the cup bearer, we shouldn't be sober. In the Sufi tradition, to be intoxicated, to be drunk, means to be so absorbed into the Divine that we are not aware of other things. The wine of love, which Rumi speaks of, frees us from the prison of our minds, our egos, connecting us to the ultimate reality. But what happens when we drink this wine? Rumi tells us that we become free, free from the constraints of the material world, free from our fears and desires. This is where the transformation occurs. We are no longer bound by the ordinary. We have reached the extraordinary. This is the state of being that the mystics, saints and prophets have spoken of throughout history, a state of being that transcends the material world, connecting us to the ultimate reality, to the One, to the Divine Beloved. Rumi adds, bring the cup, for my soul has risen beyond patience, beyond desire. Next, Rumi brings us to one of the most profound lines in this poem, in this ghazal. He says, Bring the cup of life, for it is the companion of this weary heart and the keeper of secrets. Here Rumi speaks directly of the transformative power of divine love. This love doesn't just uplift us, it heals us. <laughs> This is the crucial point in Rumi's teachings. The Divine Love is both the healer and the revealer. It heals the wounds of the heart, the pain of separation from the Divine Beloved, and reveals the hidden secrets of our souls. This is why Rumi calls it the companion of the wayway heart, the soul that has wandered in the desert of the material world, 
finds peace and rest and healing in this divine love. Rumi's emphasis on secrets is also significant. In the Sufi tradition, the heart is the seat of divine knowledge, but this knowledge is hidden behind the veils of our ego and desires and attachments. When we drink from the wine of life, these veils are lifted and the heart's true knowledge is revealed. This is the moment of spiritual awakening, where the soul comes face to face with its divine nature. At this moment, the soul is no longer restless, no longer searching. It is content in the presence of the Divine Beloved. The wine, the Divine Love, satisfies the deepest longing of the soul. The soul, having tasted this wine, no longer craves for anything from the material world. It is fully content in its union with the Divine. This state is not an escape from life but an elevation of it. It is about living in the world, but not being of the world, being connected to a higher reality, but still being engaged with the everyday things. Rumi then brings us to another powerful image. The ruby-colored wine, when it boils at midnight, it fills the heavens and the earth with divine light. This line is both beautiful and symbolic. The ruby color wine represents the divine love that, when realized fully, enlightens the entire universe. شراب لال که گر نیم شب برآورد جوش میان چرخ و زمین پر شود از او انوار. This is the climactic point of the poem. The boiling of wine at midnight represents the divine love in its most intense form, the moment in which it illuminates the entire universe. It is the moment where the soul is completely intoxicated by the presence of the Divine. In Sufi thought, this light is not just a metaphor. It is the living presence of God that fills the universe. To be filled with this light is to be filled with Divine love, knowledge and truth. And this is where Rumi's teachings culminate. The soul, having drunk from the cup of life, from the wine of life, is no longer separate from the Divine Beloved. It has become one with the Divine Light, illuminated and illuminating. 